Please stand and join in singing our opening song, Enter the Journey. We will be singing two verses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today we continue this journey through Holy Lent, a time of preparation, a time of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, a time to grow more closely in relationship with God and with one another. But sometimes during Lent, God gives us things to celebrate, and that's always wonderful. And today, as an academy family, we have some of our students that we want to celebrate today, those who will be inducted into the Junior National Honor Society. What a great blessing you are to us, to your families, to your communities. And today, we look forward to celebrating you and, uh, and giving thanks for all of your gifts. So in the name of our Academy family, I want to welcome parents and family and friends who've gathered here this morning to pray. I want to welcome those who are watching us this morning on our parish live stream, family and friends of our, of our Academy children. And today we are one family wherever we are, united in faith, united this day in celebration. And so as we prepare our hearts then to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we turn to the God of love, mercy, and kindness as we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. 
Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send a letter along to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that he may cure, you, cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, I am a god with the power over life and death, that this man should send someone to be cured of leprosy. Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king. Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him with the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord, his God, and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar, better than all the waters of Israel? I cannot wash in them and be cleansed. With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, wouldn't you have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the door of Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all of earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response will be, A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst, a thirst is, is my soul for the living God. God. When, when shall, shall I, go I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running water, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst, a thirst is, is my soul for the living God. When, when shall I go and behold the face, the face of, God? of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst, a thirst is, my is my soul for the, for the living God. God. When, when shall, shall I go, go and behold the face, the face of, God? of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst, a thirst is, is my soul for the living God. God. When, shall when shall I go and behold the face, the face of, God? of God? Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then I will give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A, A thirst, thirst is my, my soul for, for the living God. God. When, when shall, shall I, go I go and behold the face, the face of God? God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, 
when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove Jesus out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you may know that one of my favorite things to do is to read, and I like to read children's stories because sometimes I think they're really smart. Sometimes they have more smart stuff in them than adult stories do. So I wanted to read you a story today that I think will say a little bit about what I think today is about. And it's a story that's called, Our Father Is. You still hear it. Whenever kids get together, everyone tries to outdo each other. My dad has a big car. Yeah, my dad's car is bigger than your dad's. Well, my dad has a red car. So what? My dad's car is redder than your dad's. But we all have a father in heaven. What can we say about our father? Our father made everything. He created the planets one by one. Our father is also a clockmaker who gives rhythm to the days and seasons as they come and go. Our father is a painter who invented all the colors of the rainbow. Our father is a musician who writes symphonies with water and wind. Our father spoke the word as a poet, making the earth, <clears throat> the animals, <clears throat> excuse me, and the air. Our father is the world's greatest chef, giving the flavors to everything we eat, to the fruits and vegetables that are our food. Our father is a tailor who sewed seams of mountains and covered them in clothes, cloths of silence and the purest snow made red by the sunrise and orange at sunset. Our father sweetly caresses the foothills so that people and animals will go to sleep. Our father wakes the valleys in the morning, sending the winds a little at a time through the trees and the fields. Our father planted stars like seeds in the sky so that we could see when nighttime comes. Our Father put sand on the shore of the sea so that we could play and scatter rocks to give joy to the waves. Our Father laughs out loud when he sees us happy. Our Father makes dreams of the clouds that then become rivers, waterfalls, and oceans. Our Father brings everything to life here in the garden, every egg that hatches, flower that blooms, and every newborn creature. Our Father is a guardian with all the angels at his command. Our Father has compassion for every tear of ours that falls. Our Father is against all kinds of pride and cruelty, and he holds hands, and he always holds his little ones in his embrace. Our Father is the strongest of all, but he never smashes anything. Our Father is very patient and guides everything and everyone with gentle care, even the littlest one. Our Father is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but when we call on him, he says, here I am. Our Father is great. Our Father made the universe all by himself. I love that story because it tells us something about God, who is a great Father. And you know something that's really amazing? You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and everyone here, you are his, ch his children. You are, we are his children. And you know the day that we became his children? The day that we were baptized. Maybe some of you were baptized right here in this baptismal font. Maybe you were baptized somewhere else. It's always good to remember during Lent. Because you know why Lent, who can tell me how long is Lent? Does anyone know how long Lent is? Back there. Okay, 40 days, right? Give or take a few without counting Sundays, 40 days of Lent, right? Um, and it is, now for us, when I say the word Lent, what words do you think of? What word do you think of when I say Lent? 
Someone over here. What word do you think of? Just say. Say words. Anybody? Yeah. What do you think of when we say Lent? Parents, what do you think of when we say Lent? Preparation. Preparation. All right, great. It's a time of preparation. What else? All the way in the back row. What do you think of? Uh, Who? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, right. What do you think of when we say Lent? Over here. Let's go to this side. Over here, singing. On, what, do, what do you think of? Easter. Okay, preparation for Easter. What else do you think of? Sacrifice. What else do you think of? God. What else do you think of? Okay, fasting, prayer, almsgiving, sacrifice, the cross, Good Friday, all those kinds of things. Maybe someone's giving up something for Lent. You're fasting, you're sacrificing. But you know what? If I were in a church filled with Catholic Christians from the beginnings, the first centuries of the church, like almost 2,000 years ago, and I asked them what word come to mind when I say Lent, you know, they wouldn't have said any of these words. You know what they would have said? Baptism. Because Lent began as a 40-day time of preparation for people who were going to be baptized at Easter. Still, this still every year. On on Saturday night before Easter Sunday, we baptize grown-ups. Now, usually, many of us are baptized as babies. We don't remember it. But we also have people who want to become Catholic Christians, so they're baptized at the Easter vigil. And Lent is a time of preparation. Now, you know what? When we hear the Bible readings today, I, I, I hope you heard a connection. There was a connection between all the readings, and the first reading and the the responsorial psalm had a connection, especially. And the connection was water, because Naaman the Syrian was sick. He had leprosy. That was a really terrible thing to have in those days. Today they can cure it, but then they couldn't. And so he's told to go and bathe in the river, and he's healed. Now, imagine someone who's preparing for baptism hearing that reading. The church has proclaimed that reading in Lent for 15, 16, 1700 years to remind people preparing for baptism. This is what's going to happen on the day of your baptism. And then on the responsorial psalm, we said, a thirst is my soul for the living God. If you've ever been thirsty, you know how much you want water. Well, that's true spiritually for us as well. So the readings today really are ancient readings that the church has always used to prepare people for baptism. Um, Now, we may not hear them that way because we've already been baptized. But today, let's just remember our baptism. That day we became children of a loving Father who gives us life on this earth and wants us to do our best and to prepare. In some ways, you guys live Lent every day in terms of preparation. Those of you who are in the academy, you're, this is time of preparation for you for a wonderful life. A life that God is going to let you know what he wants you to do with your life. So be listening. Those of you in the, in the honor society, you have really great gifts. And everyone, even if, you're, I, even if you're not in the honor society, you have great gifts. But you guys were celebrating your gifts, especially today. Uh, and so God gave you those gifts so that you can do something in this world. But now you're preparing to do that. You don't know what God wants you to do with your life. You might be saying, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. But that's an okay thing to think about. But instead of asking, what do I want to be when I grow up, ask this question. Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? And then listen. Ask God that question every day and listen just for three minutes. And maybe not, you're not going to hear, God's not going to show up and talk in a microphone to you. But over time, in your heart, God will speak to you, and he will tell you what he wants you to do with your life. So we're grateful today for all the gifts that God gives us, no matter what grade we're in, no matter if we're out of school a long time, no matter what. God gives us all gifts. We are his children. Lent is a great time to think about our baptism, when we became his child, when he told us that he he loves us, that he has a a destiny for us. Uh, So those of us who've already been baptized especially the grown-ups here, one thing you might choose to do. Take what's left of Lent and make a pilgrimage to your baptismal font. Maybe take your children to the font where they were baptized. Take a ride there. Maybe it's close enough. Maybe you have pictures at home of their baptism day. Maybe you have, my mother kept the garment that I wore that day. I still have it. Maybe you have some memories of it. Talk to your children about those things. Talk about baptism. That's really what Lent has a lot to do with so that when Easter comes, we will celebrate with joy 
the wonderful love of a father uh, who sent his own son to pass through death into life so that we could live forever, but while we're here, so that we could build his kingdom. Please stand as we place our needs now before our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church, that we may join together as a family to represent Christ to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis, that the Holy Spirit may always guide him as he leads the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all youth, that, we, that they may be properly led towards Christ and receive the love and help they need to draw closer to and freely embrace their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all people affected by the war and civil unrest, especially the families and children from Ukraine, that they rely on their faith and God's word to bring understanding and comfort to them in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, that they may be led by the Holy Spirit as they serve the global community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are sick, especially Adam DeAngelis, Richard Sylvia, and Rosemary Pizzuta Phillips, that the risen Lord may heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Dalla Webb, Virginia Fleming, Sandra Bunger, and Anna Donnelly, may their souls and bodies rise with Christ to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our students, that they may grow in knowledge as well as in our faith, in order to grow up and give glory to God in all that we do, that we remember in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we gather today on this first full day of spring, we thank you for the beauty of springtime, for a new life and resurrection. We thank you for your love for us, for all you have given us, for all of our gifts. May we use them to show the world the beauty of your love. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Hosea. We will sing all verses. Long have I waited for your coming 
come to me and living deeply our new life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, For you have given your children this sacred time of Lent for the renewing and purifying of our hearts, that freed from disordered affections, we may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, with St. Paul, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage and the joy today to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the smingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Love and mercy, age your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring you condemnation, O Lord, but health, mind, and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Give me safe for eternal life. As we approach the table of the Lord, please join in singing our communion hymn, You Alone.
Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Before our final blessing, I just want to say thank you to all who came to pray today, especially with our inductees to the National Honor Society those who served and read, and uh, all those who made this a beautiful liturgy. Especially, I want to thank the music ministry. You guys did a great job today. Thank you very much. It was beautiful. And after our final blessing, there will be a closing hymn, and then just a couple of minutes to change gear from Mass into the induction ceremony. So if you just can remain seated, we'll uh, get that underway as soon as we can. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing song, Change Our Hearts. We will only be singing 
one verse. This time, your word says it can be change our lives. This time, your life could make us free. We are the people your call set apart. Lord, this time, change our lives. So any sibling can sit with their parents if you need to move.
Okay, round two. <laughs> I think we're ready to go. Welcome to the 8th Annual Academy of St. Paul National Junior Honor Society Induction Ceremony. We are here to celebrate the accomplishments of the 2021-2022 school year and welcome the new members who are charged to uphold the five pillars of the National Junior Honor Society. Scholarship, service, leadership, character, and citizenship. Please stand for the St. Paul prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glorious St. Paul, most zealous apostle, martyr for the love of Christ, give us a deep faith, steadfast hope, a burning love for our Lord, so that we can proclaim with you, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Help us to become apostles, serving the church with a pure heart, witnesses to your truth and beauty amidst the darkness of our days. With you we praise God our Father, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ, now and forever, amen. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This morning, we will be welcoming 14 new members. Oh, please be seated. This morning, we will be welcoming 14 new members into this prestigious society. Congratulations to their parents and families of these remarkable young people. Your unconditional love, guidance, support, and encouragement throughout the years are contributing factors allowing your sons and daughters to be here this morning. Your efforts have paid off. Thank you to our teachers, administrators, and staff for their contributions and unwavering dedication to our students. Induction into the National Junior Honor Society is not just an honor. It is an opportunity for growth in the areas of scholarship, service, leadership, character, and citizenship. You are challenged to fuel the fire that drives you to give, to give your time, to give your knowledge, to give your energy to those who need help the most. You must not sit back and rely on your ability to study and work tirelessly in your classes. That is not enough. You are agreeing to take an active role in your lives. You share the belief that the few can help inspire the many. You will follow in the footsteps of the members dating back to the class of 2016, who were selfless leaders who give service to others without worrying what they will receive in return. Mrs. Carroll, Father John, members of the faculty, parents, students, families, and friends. Welcome to the 2022 National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the council of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of the National Junior Honor Society chapter. For current members, we hope this will serve as a reminder to you of the standards of excellence that you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Our chapter is proud to have been inducting new members since 2015, and with today's ceremony, 
indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for old, other students. In addition to the strong academic records which establish the eligibility for membership, our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations and serve our school and community. We are proud of this record of accomplishment and welcome the new members who bring new energy in support of our continuing work on NJHS. Being inducted into the society is not just a recognition, but an opportunity to step up and continue to excel in the areas of scholarship, leadership, service, character, and citizenship. Through your service and leadership projects, both in school and outside of school, it is essential that you maintain your schoolwork and standing in other programs. We welcome the new members of the National Junior Honor Society and charge them to continue our work and develop new programs of their own to serve the school and local communities. It is, it is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that membership in the Academy of St. Paul chapter of the National Junior Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the five qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended. Knowledge is one of the great elements in life which leads to the highest success and be acquired in one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past the torch guiding us to understand the present, and the light that eliminates the future. Candidates have the charge continually to expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and let others lead others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willing to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school community or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. Service. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help both others at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. Character. Character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that with which out no one can respect oneself nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life and once developed grows steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others 
to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. Citizenship. Citizenship is the obligations each member of our society faces to live up to the democratic ideals given to us by the founders of our country. The responsibilities each of us has to our home community, our state, our nation, and our world are many. As good citizens, we are bound to live up to the laws and guidelines which unite us as a civilized society. Good citizens work together to improve not only our lives, but the lives of all our fellow citizens. Good citizenship requires that we remain strong and vigilant in protecting the freedoms and rights that we have been granted to us and in preventing injustices from entering our lives. We, the members of the chapter, are called to live up to the high standards of citizenship from this day forward. So at this time, I would like to ask the new almost inductees to please stand. Okay. And please join me in reciting the pledge. I pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Junior Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be loyal to my school and will maintain and encourage the high standards of scholarship leadership, service, citizenship, and character. Okay. At this time, as I call your name, you will step forward. Ryan Aiello Toro. Sarah Bickford. Charlotte Bissick. Brogan Fascinelli. Owen Kenny, Thomas La Barbiera, Nathan Longway. Michaela Matos, Emma Palazzolo, Jordan Reyes, Samuel Rotolo. Lindsay Urshik, Alexander Vernace, and 
Anna Zerlini. Congratulations on becoming members of the Academy of St. Paul National Junior Honor Society. Thank you for celebrating our inductees with us. We are very proud of these fine scholars. Please join us in the stewardship prayer, which can be found on the last page of the program. Oh, please stand. Dear God, I am thankful for everything you have given me. My gifts of time and talent are precious. Help me to use them to do your will. Please help me share all my gifts and nurture in me a stewardship way of life, marked by prayer, service, and sharing. With Mary's help, may I be generous with the gifts entrusted to me. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, at this time, I just, you may sit down for a second. I would just like to thank uh, Mrs. Geisen for a wonderful job getting everything coordinated. Thank you to Mrs. Flanagan and all the teachers, Mrs. Vernays, all the teachers that assisted in helping with the programs. Uh, Ms. Evans, Mrs. Evans, who's next door, um, across the street, um, everyone has help to put this together and we are so blessed again that we are able to have it in God's house with Father John our pastor thank you so much um, I do want to note that I know you would like to take a few pictures with your children we are a little bit short for time there is a funeral mass that will be beginning at 1030 so and then following this, there is a reception across the street in the cafeteria. Please join us to celebrate your children even further. So, Father, would you like to say anything? Well, one last congratulations. Please stand. Go ahead, stand up. Okay. Um, where's Mrs. Geisen? Mrs. Geisen? Where? Oh, okay, there she is. Um, did you get the one big picture for them? Okay. All right, so there's just going to be now some pictures and things. Feel free to take them. 